oh no, there's a new vulnerability with the YubiKey, and my YubiKeys are now compromised, and now my online accounts can be compromised. Uh, whatever shall I do? If you can't tell by the tone in my voice, there's a vulnerability going on right now, and I think a lot of people are overhyping it if you haven't read past the headline in the article. If you like my content, please like and subscribe, as well as follow all of my socials down below. But without further ado, what the hell is a YubiKey? What is this vulnerability? Why am I not that worried? And is there a fix for it? So, a YubiCo YubiKey is the gold standard when it comes to protecting your accounts. Organizations and governments around the world use them to protect a lot of their most sensitive accounts. And what's interesting is, it's not really that much uh, to worry about with these keys. But what is interesting, and we'll get into it later, this key is vulnerable to it, this one is not. We'll talk about why later on. First off, why do you need a YubiKey? Well, there's four different types of authentication. You may be familiar with multi-factor authentication, or MFA, or two-factor authentication, or 2FA. Well, basically what that is referring to is the four types of authentication, which is something you know, something you are, something you have, and somewhere you are. Something you know is your password, something you are is your thumbprint, or your eye scan, or your face scan, something you can't change that is unique to yourself. And something you have as well, YubiKey, like a hardware security key, like these guys right here. And these follow the FIDO WebAuth N standard. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But the fourth authentication metric, if anyone is curious with the summary, you are pretty straightforward. Geographically, where are you in the world? But also what's interesting is a phone number classifies as a somewhere you are, not something you have. Just, just in case anyone's curious about that. Now, if you're curious about good password managers, how to secure all of your accounts and the different kinds of multi-factor authentication, I have a whole video that I've gone into all of that and the password managers that I recommend that you can watch. But for this video, all you need to know is that these are the gold standard because unlike a phone that has a singular generated key that generates your TOTP that can potentially be compromised through malware that can then sweep the key on your phone that's always connected to the internet, these aren't connected uh, uh, all the time to the internet, as well as they're only powered when you plug them in and authenticate to them. But you can also add an additional password or pin or such to these before you actually can use the key in the first place. So the reason why I'm not really that worried about this attack is at the high level, you have to have physical access to it. You have to have some sophisticated knowledge and able to be able to clone the key in the first place. And Basically, what you would have to do is have about $11,000 in equipment to be able to measure it through an oscilloscope to get the ECDSA or elliptic curve digital signature algorithm key, which, you know, is what these are based off of in order to clone that key. So you would have to get access to the physical person after potentially, you know, phishing them for their account that you want to compromise. Then you would have to do all that little, you know, trickery to, you know, grab the key off of it, clone it to another one without the person noticing the entire time, by the way, then put the key back in there and then be able to access the account there's just so many different steps involved that you should really only be worried about this if you are possibly the target of a nation state actor which at that point i would literally be looking at you and be like bro what did you do what did you do and at this point you are on the run like edward snowden okay just to be out here this is not really something the average person should be worried about now as i mentioned this yubikey is vulnerable this YubiKey is not, because I think what happened was the security researcher got a nice bug bounty through YubiCo and disclosed this vulnerability, because in May, they released a new firmware version, 5.7, that had a new cryptographic library that actually remedied the issue. So if you bought a YubiKey security key since uh, May of 2024, 
relax, bro. You're fine. And if you really want to check what it is, fire up your Yubico Authenticator app on your phone or your desktop, and then check the firmware version. If it says 5.7.0 or newer, you're fine. Just go relax. But if you're really that worried about getting a new one, I will have links below, down below for all of you. Disclosure, I am a Yubico ambassador for several years. I've been a fan of their product that I've, I've loved them even long before I've had the ability to work with them. And you can help support this channel a little bit as well. But you don't need to go out and buy one. If you're just an average everyday Joe, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But there are some advantages to the new YubiKeys we can talk about. So the new firmware has some advantages besides the new cryptographic library that's a little bit more secure from these type of attacks. So with these guys, they only do 2048-bit RSA uh, uh, keys that they generate. Whereas the new one, to comply with DoD mandates that I think have to roll out around 2027, generate 3072 or 4096-bit keys. So a lot lot more secure if you need to generate those certs and stuff with that key length. But the other advantage that you have is these only allowed you to have 32 TOTP timed one time passcode, the rolling code that you have on your phone with the uh, device being stored, whereas the new one allows for up to 64. The old keys only allowed for 25 pass keys. The new ones allow for a hundred pass keys. So there are some advantages to go out and buy them. Now, the other thing that I always recommend is that you should definitely have, well, more than one YubiKey. And if you're wondering why I have this many, some of these are gonna be coming out in torture tests soon. So I'm gonna be burying them in my backyard, drenching them in water, throwing them in a washing machine. And I'm even going to be running them over with my car to see when do they finally give out. Stay tuned if you want to actually see that content as well. So that'll be coming out soon too. Um, I just got to get around to actually doing the test and give it about a week or so uh, of, you know, torture tests and everything when I get around to setting up the metrics there. Follow me on Mastodon and Discord if you want to see the criteria that I'm going to have for that, as well as Matrix. Uh, I'll have it all listed out there, what my plans are, and I'm taking feedback from my community on things they want to see, which is why I actually learned about the washing machine. We're going to throw it in some of my jeans probably this weekend when I go do my laundry and see if they last a load or two. And if they don't, Oh, wow. But needless to say, they are still the gold standard when it comes to securing your accounts. I still recommend using a YubiKey. If you currently have a YubiKey, don't worry about it. Unless you're a high value target, don't worry about it. It's not that much of an issue. I'll also link the article down below from Ars Technica that talked about this and you can read and see it's not really something you should be worried about all that much. So with that being said, Stay safe out there. Happy hacking. I love all of you. And be the key master to your security and your future. Hey, I'm the key master. Are you the gatekeeper? Ghostbusters reference. Out.